Hello everyone, welcome to another week in my garden. Not the best of weather this week, but the promised us better weather for next week. I was just looking at the potato that's really shot up this week, I don't know if it's good, but I was looking at the flowers and you don't usually see just how nice these flowers are. I mean, they're I don't, they're not scented or anything, but look at that, they're absolutely out of something as mundane as a potato should have such a beautiful flower. Very nice, I like those. We'll harvest them. I always have a rule of thumb where my early potatoes, especially in protection, need 100 days. So I've got it marked on the calendar. It's towards the end of the month we'll be lifting them then and we'll see what we've got. The tomatoes, as you can see, are doing quite well. Um, I've cut the watering down a little bit because of this overcast weather. Next week when the sun comes out they'll really start up again. Uh, no feed yet. We have got tomatoes on them over there, look. But I, I'm going to start feeding them with the tomato fertilizers when the sun's shining. The cucumbers are now beginning to pull away and show a bit of flower there, they'll be all right. Peppers, they're doing fine, not there. They're showing a little bit of flower coming through now. They will make, oh, meet high some of these, they'll be really strong plants. The other thing we've done this week is we've brought some of the bedding plants in. Uh, just to give them a bit of a reprieve from the wind and you can see where some of the wind has touched them in the cold rain but they'll grow through it all right. The uh, penstemon that we were growing on out outdoors about to bring them in they really didn't like the weather. We've got the next batch of lettuce ready for going in as soon as uh, We've cleared the plot at the bottom, these will go hardened up and straight down. A few late leaks there, I should put those in a bit later, there'll be no problem. I'll put them outside today and they can grow on happily outside. Just a reminder to take these side shoots off these tomatoes as they're growing up. There's a little one here, look, we'll just take that off, there you go. And just keep it up, keep your eye on them, especially at the top, look. Remember, don't touch the the flowers, else you'll lose your tomatoes. But they're fine. A little bit slow. There's another one coming there. Look, it's far too small for me to get with my hands. So. Right, this week we'll be do going down the garden and we'll be showing you what we've planted, how things are doing, and how to look after them. So we'll make our way down now. Right, the trailing tomatoes, they've felt the cold wind a little bit, but they seem all right. I think they'll be all right in the, in the touch. They're coming on beautifully now, look. They're really going to produce some fruit. I can't see any fruit on them yet, so we'll have to wait and see how they go. Right, this is the uh, grapevine, as you can see. It's coming along nicely. It's absolutely full of potential grapes. As it's been growing, I've been watching out for these shoots like this and I always take those off. I always take this off because this will make a long runner just here and I want I want the vine to cover, as you see, it hasn't quite got there yet. But if, by taking these off, there's another one here. I just snip the ends off to stop the growth a little bit so we can get a good canopy. Although if we get grapes out of all these flowers, it'd be a bit of a bonus. But I do like the canopy and that should push push the saps along so we can thicken this end up a little bit. It's very early season and it's, we've had some very, very cold weather so I'm quite pleased with it. It's doing quite well. The, um, the grease bands we put on, 
as you can see are doing a very good job they're stopping a, a lot of insects on there this is just one towards the end of the summer we'll take them off and put new ones on but you can see this it's doing its job very very well if you just look up no, nice and clean normally at this time of year these are absolutely covered in aphid and leaf kill they're okay they're fine this is with your bad weather i'm afraid this year with no plums this is uh, where i've set a, a few carrots between the trees while they're young if you remember we set the long beds out over there they are coming up Band on the pear trees doing its job very well if you look here look you can see the weather's really took its toll on these with the wind so a lot of these will drop off anyway these are the cause yet they've took quite a knock from this cold weather but can you see there look it's got wet and cold there so that's not going to make anything at all so that needs to be taken off i haven't got a knife with me so i'll have to just, just that's what you have to watch for. Another one there, look, I'll have to come down with the knife. They'll get over it as long as we get some warm weather. The celery seems to be okay. I think they'll be fine. The tomatoes they had left over, I popped them out here in the long beds. They've took a real knock from this cold weather, but I've been down to do the side shooting and there's hardly any movement at all, so. Parsnips, well, parsnips are pretty tough. They're fine. Yeah, no problems. They just keep them weed free. Beetroots, as you can see, they they're fine. They've taken the weather well. They're all standing well. And I think there's a weed there. Look, let me just take that weed out for you. There you go. The main crop potatoes. They seem to be fine now. There's been no real wind damage here keeping the soil between the rows well cultivated because i shall put some fertilizer in there these are the first early potatoes coming into flower nicely the uh the weather hasn't touched these at all first early second early is along there they're doing fine this is the cold rabbit we put in I dropped a bit of lettuce between because I had a few left over so I popped those in. I have to keep these on because the pigeons pigeons will be after these until they get a bit stronger and then I'll take them off. These are those mesh tunnels that we talked about some time ago. Everything seems to be fine in there. They are doing rather well. It does shade the wind a little bit. The few cabbages I had left over I popped just between the tunnels. These are a few brussels actually that I had left over when we planted these and I've been keeping an eye on them. I've sprayed them a couple of times with a bit of soapy water and they seem to be absolutely, <coughs> excuse me, absolutely clear up to now. This has got the Brussels, the cauliflower and the first cabbages in if you can remember. Hopefully these will hurry up so we can get them out. The lettuce, I, I popped a few lettuce in here because they had a few left over. This is the salad net, as you like to call it. Uh, all these lettuce are coming through nicely. I have got some more in the greenhouse remember that will follow these in. Beetroot we put in for baby beetroot if you can remember. An inch across now so we're not far off. We'll take that as and when it presents itself. They're doing rather well. I'm pleased with those. Radish if it gets much bigger I shall have to take these out. I have set some more at the side uh the onions they didn't like it there at all they they failed me set some more up that end so we can try them again there's a few more cabbage there look this side of the broad beans again lovely and clean right these are two rows of broad beans remember we put these in the greenhouse and brought them out i've had to put some strings on because of the wind 
it's really bashing them about and I didn't want them to knock them over. Uh, this is one of the advantages of using the dwarfer varieties because they don't get so high. Lovely and clean, good plants. The row of French beans we put in haven't really moved yet, it's been, been a bit cold. Now the onions took quite a bit of a bash in the wind. What I've tried to do this year, I've grown the first three rows you can see here. I've actually done those from seed. There's red, as you can see, and there's some white or brown if you want to call them this. So this, the first three rows were grown from seed and that's how we've grown from so, um, set. And one or two of the sets took quite a bashing from the from the wind. Again we've got red and brown as I call them or white. The garlic is here, it's fine. Uh, we won't touch these until the tops begin to die down, all this goes yellow and then we'll dig them up and see what we've got. It's nice to have a bit of garlic. The peas that we put in, they're doing fine. Uh, what I shall do this week, now they're getting up to this site, where the ground's now still a bit wet, uh, I should put a mulch round the outside of these, so they've got a mulch inside now, so helps keep the ground a bit moist. Raspberries, we inherited these um, raspberries, so there's a bit of all sorts in here, uh, summer and autumn all mixed up. I think we're getting to the stage now where after this year we might start all over again with the raspberries and so we know where we are. These are the French beans if you can remember we put in. Now these, uh, it, they were well hardened up before we put them in, good job because of the, uh, the weather. They seem alright, they're protected a bit with these raspberries but there's a slug or two being on them, I'll have to put something down. The nematodes don't seem to be working very well up this end. These are the strawberry lines, doing very well. They're all set, there's strawberries coming on them now. They're, I've been through and hand weeded them, there's still an odd weed in them I can see, but they're doing all right. Um, we should have a good crop off these this year. All we need now is uh, some really good sunshine to ripen them up. The gooseberries are here, look. They're doing rather well. A bit of rain will plump them up a little bit. I did have a, a little bit of an aphid problem on these, but the, the spray seems to have done its job. You can see where the leaves are killed, that's aphid where they've been sucking from the sap out the back of the leaf. Now I have sprayed with a bit of soapy water. They seem to be they seem to be pretty clear. The soapy water washes the waxy coat off and there is a few gooseberries on them, but we're not expecting a lot just yet. Red currants, as you can see they've had this was a bit of aphid marking lot where they've been at the back but it's clean now so a little bit on there look but that the next spray will take that off it's only a bit of soap it won't hurt the plant at all but as you can see it's not affecting the the crop at all they're doing fine should get some nice berries off though now this plant had a really heavy heavy aphid but as you can see they, we're keeping them down it's fine but look at the crop in there they're red currants and anybody who's dealt with red currants the smell when you touch the foliage is beautiful this is a black currant yeah very late into leaf this one I don't know why I was a little bit concerned about it but it seems to be seems to be fine now when I did the greenhouse, I had five cucumbers left over. So what I've done, I've just popped them down here to see if, see if we can grow them outside. And since I put them in, we've had nothing but bad weather, but I'm sure they look all right. And right, we've had a little walk down and it's, it's very, very chilly. Um, as you can see, 
we've come quite some way with the with the garden since we started. We started nearly empty, remember, and uh, we should have some good crops. I've still got some broccoli to put in yet. Now broccoli, I like to put a pinch of seed in where they're going to grow. Broccoli don't seem to like to be grown and moved, so I shall just. I'll only put about nine or ten plants in just just spot the seed out little groups and then thin them to one and they'll be fine the other thing I've got to put in is some kale my wife likes kale for her soups and my daughter likes kale in the soups and the in the winter when the crops are finished and there's only bits left, we let the chickens down and the chickens absolutely love the kale. They come down every two or three days for a peck at it. Kale's pretty tough stuff and it's supposed to be the new superfood, so that'll be going in. That'll be just about, I think, the full garden. Um, as you can see, it is it looks good, we'll bring it on, keep the hose to go and keep the weeds down. We'll fertilise the potatoes and when we get into summer we might have to do some watering. We will spray the potatoes for the blight, warm and humid, I will start but I will let you know as and when we do that. But that has got to be done. Keep it clean, keep it hoed. This is the Morello cherry on the back of the shed on the north wall. As you can see it's set, um, what I've been doing is I've left these here because that will continue along now, I'll tie that in later. Any of these shoots that come forward I've been taking off, they'll continue training along the strings and I shall have to put a net here later on when it has to ripen to keep the birds off but I'm sure they'll be fine. We won't have a huge crop but we'll have some. Right, Friday today, it's been, had a good week overall I think. Um, I bought these, well my wife actually bought these for us. Um, I know it's not really policy to buy plants in flower but if you don't see them in flower you don't know what you're going to get. I mean they're very attractive. The colour lilies, and you see these are lilies that we put in last year. We're rather fond of lilies so I'm going to pop these in just here so they'll make a nice show from the house. Lovely plants, well rooted as you can see, very well rooted. But I should just pop it in here look. Now we've had them a day or two but we've had to wait because the pheasants that my wife feeds at the feeding station and so we've had a pheasant with five ticks around so we've had to wait for them so they grow up a bit and give me space to pop these in so that was the delay but I'm sure she'll uh, I'm sure she'll take a photo of them for you to see them at the end of, end of this film a lovely little thing uh, but everything has to wait obviously for the birds so I'll pop this in and it's Friday again today um, I'd say we've had a good week overall I think. Uh, next week I think it's going to be a little bit more sunny and we'll be able to get more done. So that'll be it for this week and hopefully see you next week and it's bye for now.